With that, let me introduce my friend, Senator uh, Bernie Sanders. Sir. Well, thank you, uh, Congressman Grijalva, uh, Commissioner uh, Garcia. Thank you very much. Um, Sheriff Estrada, thank you very much for your years of service. This man has been in law enforcement for what, almost 50 years now? Almost 50 years. Uh, and knows this area probably as well as anybody. Um, let me thank all of you for being here. Um, and let me begin by paraphrasing uh, what Pope Francis said uh, when he was at the border in uh, mid-February. And what he said is that ultimately the solution is going to be compassion, not hatred. It is going to be good public policy, uh, not um, bigotry. And I agree very much with what Pope Francis said. Uh, as I have traveled around this country and have talked to immigrant families, and wherever we go, uh, we go out of our way to try to meet with immigrant families, uh, and particularly Latino uh, immigrant families, I am struck by the fear and struck by the sadness that grips uh, so many of them. Uh, I remember uh, being in Phoenix a number of months ago talking to a number of young girls, teenage girls, uh, with tears literally coming down their cheeks, who were frightened that they or their parents would be deported at any moment. People living in absolute fear that their family life could be disrupted. I have seen the sadness of families torn apart, fathers or mothers or both sent out of this country having to leave their little children. Can we imagine parents having to separate themselves from their small children and leave them with others here in this country? I recall talking to a United States serviceman, a man who has put his life on the line to defend this country. And while he was abroad, his spouse, his wife, was deported. Uh, and I have met with a 12-year-old boy who longs to be reunited with his mother. Uh, that is why I am here today, uh, to meet with Sheriff Estrada, to talk to others, uh, to see for myself the conditions on the border, and to articulate a different vision that many others are articulating in terms of where we need to go in immigration reform. And I should mention that the issue of immigration to me is a bit personal because I am the son of an immigrant. Uh, my father came to this country at the age of 17 without a nickel in his pocket, without knowing any English, uh, never made much money, but was the proudest American than anybody uh, could imagine. Uh, all of us, I would hope that all of us, are rightly appalled by the divisive bigoted and xenophobic comments of people like Donald Trump. And let me say what I have said many times. People can disagree in this country about anything, including immigration reform. But bigotry and racism and xenophobia and attacks against people in a very personal way is not what this country is supposed to be about. And I will do everything I can to oppose that kind of language and those kinds of actions. Uh, Trump's labeling of Mexicans as rapists and criminals repulses all Americans of goodwill. Mexico is our neighbor. They are one of the most, one of the countries in the world in which we have extremely important relations with to insult an entire nation is not befitting of anybody, let alone a candidate for President of the United States. Our job, as always, is to bring people together, not drive them apart. Here in Arizona, we have people like Sheriff um, uh, our, 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 our Apeo, Sheriff Apeo, who has made a career, a political career, of demonizing immigrants and preying on vulnerable people 
and communities. His racial profiling, his inhumane jails, jails that should not exist in this country, that are a disgrace to humanity. In this country, we do not treat people in that dehumanizing way. That has got to come to an end. His vision for America could not be further apart than mine and a Department of Justice under President Bernie Sanders would use all of its resources to put an end to the abusive practices uh, like of people like Sheriff Apeo. Uh, Pope Francis has made the point that we should be building more bridges, not more walls, and we should treat our fellow human beings with dignity and respect. Pope Francis is right. Donald Trump and Sheriff Apeo are wrong. The so-called immigration problem we face today at this particular moment is a trumped up and exaggerated problem. The Pew Center, for example, has found that net migration from Mexico is negative. That means more people are leaving the United States to go back to Mexico and, in fact, that are coming here from Mexico. We don't need a wall and we don't need barbed wire. We need to fix our broken <coughs> criminal justice system. And here are just a few of the things that we need to do. First and foremost, it goes without saying that we need comprehensive immigration reform. We need to take 11 million undocumented people out of the shadows, out of fear, and we need to provide them with legal protection. And we need to provide them with a path toward citizenship. And let me be as clear as I can be. If Congress does not do its job in passing comprehensive immigration reform, I will use all of the powers, the executive powers of the White House to do everything that I can. During the first 100 days of my presidency, I will expand President Obama's Deferred Action of Childhood Arrivals, DACA, and the Deferred Action for Parents of Americans, DAPA. And I will end the deportation regime which is dividing so many families and sowing so much fear. The rounding up of families that happened around Christmas time and continues to happen must end, and as president, I will end it. I will fight to end private prisons and private detention facilities and have introduced legislation in the Congress to do just that. Corporations should not be profiteering off of the incarceration of people in this country, including the incarceration of immigrant families and children. We must always protect vulnerable people, and that is children in general, seniors in general, and that means children who come to our border to escape unspeakable violence from Latin America. And we just met with a young woman today uh, who came from El Salvador. Let us not forget that those children who arrived at our border to escape drug gang, drug gang violence from places like Honduras and other Central American countries deserve the right to asylum. And I would strongly disagree with Secretary Clinton on that issue. Sending children who have braved all kinds of dangers to escape some of the most violent regions in the world, telling them simply that they have to go back, is in some cases sending them back to a death sentence, and that is wrong. Fundamentally, we need an immigration policy that upholds the safety and dignity 
of all people and that works to bring families together, not tear them apart. And that is why I strongly support allowing deported immigrants to return to the United States if they would have been allowed to stay if the 2013 Comprehensive Immigration Bill would have made it into law. We need to reunite spouses who have been separated by deportation. We need to reunite children with their parents. And any other response is not what this country is about. Reuniting families by allowing deported family members to return to the United States is to me a necessary part of any humane immigration policy. At the same time, we need to crack down on people and companies that exploit and abuse undocumented people in this country. 2008, I had the experience of seeing that firsthand. I was in Immokalee, Florida, where undocumented tomato pickers and growers were treated in almost slave-like conditions. And in fact, there was a charge made by a U.S. attorney prosecution on slavery charges in the United States. And that is why we need immigration, which gives rights and protections to immigrant communities, not exploitive guest worker programs like those that form the heart of the 2007 immigration bill, a bill that the Southern Poverty Law, so Law Center described as akin to slavery, the guest worker provision. No person who was exploited or abused economically, physically, or sexually should be left without strong protections under the law. Having a fair and humane immigration policy does not mean we do not have a secure border. Of course we have a secure border and must have a secure border. But it certainly does not mean building a wall across the U.S.-Mexican border. <clears throat> Using modern technology like, like high-grade camera and thermal imaging detection, we can secure our borders while protecting the rights and needs of border communities. While we create a secure border and create a humane immigration policy, we also have to address the policies that lead to poverty and violence in Latin America. Now, all of you know that I have strongly opposed NAFTA, not only for what it has done to workers in this country, but also to what it has done to workers and farmers in Mexico. And the fact is that as a result of NAFTA, some two to three million small farmers in Mexico who were earning a living, who had some dignity, were thrown off of their jobs into the cities, and many of them came across the border. We also need to rethink the war on drugs. Instead of treating substance abuse and drug addiction as a criminal matter, we need to treat it as a public health issue. We will never deal with substance abuse by locking people away or by engaging in military-like conflict in Latin America. Let me close by reiterating, we need immigration reform that keeps families together, that ends the fear of deportation, and that allows the return of deported family members. We need to stand up to all of the bigots who are out there who are trying to make a difficult situation much worse. We need to bring 11 million people out of the shadows, and we need to respect the dignity and humanity of all people coming into the United States seeking to create a better life, people like my own father. Thank you very much.